rest of the game though. Spirit Breaker. I love the three bands from Empire though. I love the Void Band because you know they see Sanking mm -hmm. Jakiro. Spirit has ran these two openers before. They pick the Void afterwards. It just works well with them remaining. as well. Yep. Tempar Assassin, great versus the Puck. In the laning phase, they know it's just a good hero. Even though they may have been planning to pick the Razor anyway, they take the TA out because it's just a two obnoxious in the laning phase. And then Broodmother. They have nothing to deal with Brood yet. Spirit Breaker is great versus it, but yeah. the other heroes are not really excellent versus it in Spirit. DK Phobos is one of the big Broodmother spammers. So Spirit Breaker overall in this game, just like it's just a Spirit Breaker. Miposhka really likes to play the hero. And we've seen him. And Roger as well, actually. I think Roger actually will play it this time around. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure. It also works well with the Razor, with the Empowering Haste. You get a lot of movement speed, so you can keep, always keep your Link on. And it's a good way to get you know in front of Bristleback to, when you use your Nether Strike. Lion for Team Spirit. Uh, you know, we said it's a new hero. We haven't seen this one too often, but Spirit very good versus the Puck. Really Puck good. detests getting Dial playing versus like instant disable lockdowns because he can suffer a lot versus it. But Puck is also inversely also very good versus the Lion to get into the back lines. Your big damage dealer has just arrived. Yes. This... Then another stun to actually work with, synergize with the Ancient Apparition, but more importantly, Ten Team Empire remaining. keep their color scheme right now. <laughs> they are cold, merciless killers yeah. with everyone in blue, while Team Empire, they're trying to find that warm, happy Reserve place. Time. Everything is warm colors. Team Spirit. Yeah. Sorry, what did I call them? Hit Empire. Ah, Team Spirit. <laughs> uh, just like my tweet. What's... <laughs> That's maybe... and, and we tagged the wrong Team Spirit in our tweets, too. I just copied yours, man. That's my excuse. Oh, no! <laughs> I, I was looking at it, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that the Team Spirit Twitter has, like, five under, like, uh, lines or under whatever the hell. Underlining yeah. things. I, I didn't sleep well the last couple of nights, and yeah. last night we didn't get back in, like, until, like, a normal time. Like, a bad time. Or normal time for America, bad time for us. Ten so I didn't sleep remaining. much, so I... Fog literally woke me up five minutes before this game was meant to begin before I, I did. tweeted that. I did. Hence, whoops! So this Bristle, yeah. I think he's going to suffer super hard Marana? in this game. They even picked Marana too. Oh. Oh. One of these things is not colored like the other. I don't really see the synergy with the Marana either, actually. There's no setup easy stun, like unless it's just a roaming Marana. No, it's going to be Iceberg. He, play, he likes to play it mid. Okay. So it's going to be Ghostic Offlane... Is Happy just, with the mid razor and safe lane Sven. Is it for the push? Like, is it is it for the Agadim style Marana build or or for what? She doesn't instantly like get away from a mm. spirit breaker charge. No, I don't really. It's just so that she can. I mean, she's gonna build towards the right clicking build. They wanted to, they wanted a range hero that can match up versus razor because you can just leap break the link and then you actually can build like damage items. That's what Iceberg's done before in the past. He went okay. dragon lance, okay. manta, stuff Ten like that. Seconds. However, if he, if he gets caught by this event, then he's dead. Yeah, if he gets caught by this event, five seconds. He's very good versus it. I love Empire's draft right now. I think yeah. it's they've got the empowering haste. They've got the war cry for the razor. Everybody's gonna be moving like hasted movement speed as soon as war cries pop. They have Sven and Razor versus a Bristleback. That being said, though, it is an offlane Bristleback, so a lot of the like focus of him being a carry gets taken away, but I feel like he's going to suffer a lot. <sighs> I'm really liking this Empire, these Empire drafts, man. I'm just... I'm thinking this may be 2-0. I think like, this one... I mean, it, 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 it would lean towards it. Yeah, it would lean towards it. And I'm not really the biggest fan of the Marana core. I've seen Iceberg... I think he made it work the other day, or they actually, I think they ended up losing that game. But he looked good. Like, overall, his plays and everything and his farm was on point. But overall, in the grand scheme of things, a Marana core, just, I've not been seeing it having great success. Oh, uh, Maposhka. Sentry gets planted very early from FNG, oh, and, and that get the D ward. is going to be very nice. That's just meant to block the camp. Yeah. It's not even meant to get the D ward. He's just getting really lucky. And then the Observer ward. A little bit further to the west. It's just north of the other camp, so we won't block both. But it's it's still really good for the offline of Team Spirit to begin with. Yeah, FN's been on. Or F, FN, FN and FNG. Why do you guys have to play versus each other? Anyway, hey, FNG's so been try having very... NS NS when Night Stalker was always picked. Oh. That was that was the best one. What was the what was the other player names? I mean G, FN, G. FNG, G, G. G. No, G. Yeah. Ice, 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 Ice. Yeah. The three of them. Thank you, China. Thank you, China. And Southeast Asia, obviously. And Southeast Asia, yeah. But FNG's been two of them very on point with his warding and with his movement in the games. Even in the last game, he had a good wow. impact. He missed a couple maybe important hook shots, but overall, he's been playing pretty consistently, putting a lot of pressure. So two for two bounty runes going to be claimed up this time around. And we'll see how these lanes play the out. It's an offlane puck 
versus a lion and a Jikiro. And we did not get to call that out either. It is a core Jikiro. It's a, it's a, wait, are we, are we, oh. Oh. Yeah. You know, you know, I always, uh, you've cast me a lot in the past. And I always refer to this little guy. Uh, cause this is old Team Empire strat. This is strat from like two and a half years ago when BZZ played for Team Empire. And what they'd end up doing is adding so much pressure with the Bristleback in the off lane that you would then be able to push the top lane. And it, it was a, it was a, it was a double prong attack. So you just beat into the tower with liquid fire. That'll be your primary ability on, on your safe laner. Uh, Bristleback, stop dying. Um, and Bristleback would then, like when everyone rotated up to try and stop the Jakiro, the Bristleback would then push in the lane. And you keep having to move from the polar opposite sides of the map back and forward. And then when you committed to one, you then lost your building. Yeah. But that was a, it was a different time of Dota. But I got a funny feeling this strategy is going to play out very, very similarly. Oh, Vanskull. Stun with door breath. It's phase shift, so Ghost is just trying to dodge as much of the damage as possible. Yeah, he's getting good experience though, almost level two. They ended up pulling the side though for Team Spirit there, so they denied a full wave from him. And they're gonna be able to farm under the tower. So now if Ghost can pull the side, that'd be great, but yeah, Vanskull's gonna be there. He actually whiffs the stun though. Okay. He should be able to pull the creep, creep aggro though, so it won't pull much, but it does get the range creep. So we have, as we've been talking about in these, in this individual team's matchups, it's a 2v2 mid. That's just yeah. what's going to happen. So Pro Boss has to do it tough on the bot lane for now. Yeah. I mean, it gives him some freedom though, because it's not a try lane. So it's not a spirit breaker AA spend, which actually has good kill potential on Bristleback early on. It's actually a really good experience for him too. Yeah. Like, FN staying decently on top of the nice, five to nice for him. Alright. It's the illusion rune. He does. Arrow flies forward and the illusion tanks it. Value. Plus four fry spec. Plus four gold. <laughs> <laughs> the other value. You would think the arrows, like, they, they instant kill neutral creeps. They should instant kill illusions too. I think they probably should, honestly. I'll take your hmm. Only just thought of it. But then that's like an indicator that it's an illusion. True. And then you'd probably have other issues with the coding, like how it recognize illusion to replicate. Uh, Iceberg, like the, the Mirana becomes the uh, the counter to illusion based heroes. With lower sacred arrow cooldown. <laughs> Alright, so Ghostic has gotten almost no CS on this off lane. So that's the, the difference. Uh, Phobos is getting a little bit more experience because the creep wave keeps coming back in range of the tier 1 tower allowing him to get some CS and the left ain't gonna harass, but that ain't gonna do much. In fact, right now he's... I suppose he keeps getting mana from uh, all the quill sprays. Yeah, because he's gonna get it in the sick charges. That is the great thing about playing Spend versus Bristleback. It's not only that you have Warcry for the armor and you do heavy, high uh, physical damage, so you don't proc as many quills if you're hitting you in the back. Almost drops down. Yeah. yeah. You get infinite stick charges, so you always have mana to use your abilities. Uh, Vanskill is doing the pull again. Kind of messed up a little bit. He only will, uh, he doesn't even get the deny on the range creep. But thanks to the Observer Ward that uh, Roger just brought to the top lane, they at least understand that BZZ is alone. I don't Ghost believe they have enough damage, however, to make this work. They do have the 1-1 one, one build on the puck. If they get a couple bashes, they would be able to on like the line, but I think Jakiro is too tanky, especially they when he see has him. the Bassy. And they, yeah, they see him. <laughs> but they're going in anyway. Yeah, charge forward. Vanscore just did the pull. You'll get your first stun out in the Spirit Breaker. And couple liquid fire to the face. Yep. They do get the side pull though, so that's pretty nice. nice. FNG. Bar strike onto Moposhka. Oh, it's a haste. He has a haste. Oh, this so is a dead AA. This may well in fact be a dead AA. Oh, but there's FN will move over. Chilling, touch buff up. But FNG's got a bar strike available and he goes up into the tree lines, lets the bar strike go. FNG keeps running back out again. Uh, he's actually fine with Poshka. That was a nice salve usage there. I didn't realize, I thought Phobos was actually in the lane still, so at first I thought Miposhka would get brought down, but mm -hmm. yeah, nice little jukes in the tree line, gets salved up. Mid lane is where the first one's gonna be, Iceberg, oh, the attack! He'll live! He's on 12 HP! The attack from Chappy just manages to reach him, but he's still underneath the tower. Vanscore. Keeping Chappie down. 
least it's a chicken. So Iceberg got the first blood though, right? Yeah. Yes. First blood went to Iceberg. With Roger what? He was had, like, a little too deep. He had like 10 HP. He he oh, hit man. he hit a point like range arrow, like just just enough damage to tip him over the edge. And PTZ is going to be so happy about this. Offlane Puck, it's almost impossible to dodge the dual breath. Yeah. Just because of the way it spills out in these two waves. Can't leave the Jakiro alone too long though. You know, you might have spare break here. However, he gets the side pull up again. And this is already like a quad stack camp. So it's very hard for either team to really bring it down. And if Ghosty tries to contest it, he's so low. Yeah. And it's also like, like it's no mana for BTZ to commit his liquid fire. I want to see how he how he builds this. Like if he wants to go for the ice path, for the secondary disable, not a great ability against a puck. Or if he goes for the three points liquid fire and tries to add pressure towards the tower. I have a funny feeling he might go for the second of that option. I think he might go two zero three. You think two zero three? Yeah, he does. He takes the liquid fire. All right. I'd want him to take macro pirate six two so he can clear that stack. Get macro pirate, clear that four or five x stack, whatever it is. Be a big surge of economy yeah. for him. But he needs to bring down the building. Right, the other upside about this is... Uh, wait, where is... Oh, they already lost that catapult wave. I was thinking, like, you could time it out with a five-minute wave, but it's uh, a little too late for that. FNG's looking to the mid. Quick sentry. Oh, hello. Dude, he, I'm telling you, he's getting, like, every D-Ward in these games. Uh, Iceberg, leap away. Difficult for Roger to initiate. How are we looking for net worth oh, no. overall? So, it's Ben is number one. Sitting just shy of the 3k mark, going in for Quick Mask of Madness. Marana, pretty close behind in the second, and then you hit the Jakiro. This will start to change around once BZZ starts pressuring and pushing. Yeah, definitely. We have Bristle, who already has Soul Ring in level 6, while Puck has level 5, and just boots off the belt. Let's go. <laughs> Actually, goes to committing the Rift to back out. Level Once this is level 4, Liquid fire, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Yeah. Does he take the macro pyre level? I think he should. Nope, he takes he's the dual three, breath. He's 3-3. Well, 3-0-3. Three, zero, three. So he's just trying to push the waves in and just nuke the puck. Puck actually dodged the dual breath in those moves. Um, he did. Well, bottom lane, should be watching the dive. Fire strike up from FNG, so it's a 1 1 trade off. Roger, Iceberg, not where he wants to be. He cliffed himself. The arrow can't reach down, but FNG, thanks to the one point in Caustic Finale. We'll find that kill. FN's on the run. Warcry, God's strength has worn off. FNG does not get in range. Connect on the Burrow Strike, but he does punch him once. But level 1 Caustic Slow will not be enough. Yep, diving past the tower when, as soon as they get their Mask of Madness with oh, the God's oh, strength. Oscar. Cold feet. Stormbolt. And score will be forced to stay there. You get the SP charging over. And he'll actually cancel that to go back and pick up the Bounty Rune. Nice rotation from Iceberg there to try to help and bail out his teammates under that dive. Gets himself, gets himself two kills for FNG. But during that trap, he gets a good chunk of damage on that mid tower, bringing it below half HP. Ghosty's trying to do the pull. <laughs> it's not going to work for him. Even if he wants to rift an orb, he doesn't have enough damage. He can maybe kill off one of the weaker creeps. Go one and Chappie oh, come in too. Yeah, that'll work. That will definitely work. That's some good money. Eye of the Storm. Normally you rotate for a kill, but you'll take the experience and gold. This is even better than a kill with Eye of the Storm. Mm, Vanskill's not looking for it. He's about to pull his own wave. This is why I had thought, you know, the Jakiro would skill Macro Pyre to try to clear the stack up. Because once when oh. teams see that kind of stack He got happening... Liquid Fire as well as Dual Breath onto Chappie. Yeah. Chappie, if he stuck around, there you go with your first one. Vanskill, oh, it's a good three-man silence. The Invis, Lion, he was revealed just because the charge. Spirit Breaker is on the way. Chappie, they know where he is. They just can't see him because the Moonlight Shadow, so they can't finish off the damage. Puck will die, and Roger Burrow oh, gets stopped. It stops him. He's so close. He knows he's so close. The stun. Oh, first call was trying to drain just enough mana to get his impale, his earth spike back up again, and he couldn't get there in time. So Roger's TP out will be successful. At least they're able to claim Ghostic as a kill. Yes, but heavy commitment and rotations coming out from Spirit for that one. He went three points in the breathe fire. You mean four? Yeah. Uh, four points, sorry, in the brief yeah. fire. Uh, in three points, the liquid fire. Yeah, that's... I mean, he's trying to pressure the lane. He's trying to do a lot of spell damage. Whoa. Nice Double burning. damage rune. Solo kill Chappie? He doesn't actually have... Ma okay, now he's got mana for a leap. 
He'll take the stun. He Their needs match? to get away oh though. God. The storm bomb. Oh, he leaves up. He'll still take the stun. However, Iceberg trying to make a break. The shrine is already being triggered. Well, that was very close to him dying there. If the stun connected before the leap went off, he would have died. But he gets the leap. He gets the distance away. Of course, the Sven stun does follow, but does end up surviving. But yeah, that's that's the one thing though. I, I was saying is that's why I usually expect to see like someone get that kind of clearing ability, especially if you're stacking like that, because that's what teams do. You know, you see a stack coming, they're gonna commit to try to bring people to take it. So, now Phobos gets a good amount of space bottom, ends up clearing out what was a, I believe just a double stack, but... I believe so. Good chunk of gold going for him. Yeah, now he's able to have the VIP boost, high amount of health. Very tanky, 3200 net worth in comparison to the Pucks 2200. Very good right now for Spirit in that department. And the fact that Sanking is feeling pretty good. He's bought in a lot of small items and also the wards, but he's sitting at 2200 net worth. He's at the same level as the Puck and well ahead of the Spirit Break right I still am waiting for this pressure. Like, I know how BZZ can play this. Hey, the Ghost actually, he messed up his phase shift, so he still got hit by Liquid Fire. Uh, you, you got Finger of Death. If that Hex connects from Vanskull, then you know Puck is gone. And this is the rotation they have to do. They bring in both supports to the top lane. Hey, now the charge comes forward. The Ice Blast can hit nicely. Vanskull gets a double stone Spirit Breaker with a door breath. It's too much damage. BZZ will die. A four-man rotation. Mipos Miposhka will drop to 100 HP. So while that happens, Iceberg is pushing the mid tower. And this is what the whole strat's about. It's smoke and mirrors. It's misdirection. And Iceberg getting the hell out of it. Tower doesn't get the last hit, but you know, Dyer gets hit at least. Mm -hmm. It's just so stupid. You commit four heroes to kill off a Jakira. Yeah, they don't want to lose. They don't want to lose their towers. However, they lose actually the more important one in the mid tower instead of dropping the top one. FNG now behind Ghostic. They should be able to get the stun, and Vanskar's going to be there with that. To save he, he can just pop him with a finger of death if it's required, but it isn't. So you still have that intimidation ability. Ghost is playing a little bit too far up there. That's the top tier one tower gone. One kill and Jakira takes the tower. Especially this early on when he's got so many levels. He's gonna have Veil very soon too. Works really well with Mirana and Sand King. Maposhka. <laughs> he's just gonna try his creep wave down. It doesn't matter. With the slow attack of the tower, you don't care about this push. Knight going underneath the tower is fine. Yeah. So Veil finished up now for Jakiro. Very tanky, and a lot of damage actually comes out from this Veil. Dual Breath is nothing to shrug off when you have it. It's got so many rain raindrops. Yeah, he bought an extra one, huh? Yeah. Okay. Good item. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Oh, Phobos. Oh, A Blast gets three creeps. <laughs> and the charge is coming. They have the observable, well, that's the reason they knew. Iceberg ooh, leaps away, he'll take the stun from the Dream Call. Double TPs are coming in. SK as well as Lion. And they know they have to D ward, and it's in the last second of the ward. Catch one. Holla holla. BZZ will now take bottom tower. <laughs> yeah, Iceberg's building into that right click build that we've been talking about. You know, the Dragon Lance into the Mantha build. Seen him do this in the past. They're smoking. They're actually going for a gank. They want Chappie. They're you, picking him out. You have Macro Pyre from BZZ, so they're still like he's fully reliant on Van Score's control. So with Finger of Death, this should be this should be a this very be dead very razor. possible. It's a veil of Discord, Finger of Death, Dual Breath, Macro Pyre, <laughs> and the level four star for I don't think Macro Pyre was even needed then, but it's a one minute cooldown. Who cares? Yeah. Why not? Mana is the only issue. 550 damage from the Mirana, 503 from Finger Death. Is under attack. Veil of Discord. This is the scary thing, actually. When you put both BZZ and Phobos in the same lane, yeah. they can just rip through a tier 1 and a tier 2 tower. Iceberg will do the defense on top. He has himself an Invis rune. Ghostig is just creep skipping. Actually, used his orb. Hasn't used the phase shift. Iceberg. He could star fall and do some decent damage, but he needs help. Finds Maposhka. Leaps in, a little bit of extra attack speed, into the Starfall, Maposhka falls down. Simple, effective. And then Moonlight Shadow. Yeah, that's 64 bonus attack speed you get from Leap now is quite a lot. 
in those types of situations, Dyer's especially. Top tower is under attack. I don't know how Empire stopped the push from, from Spirit. Yeah, it is It is kind of concerning. They're they TPing in. Are actually They're charging PCZ. The Dream Call is out. The tower's already gone down, so they won't have the extra armor. FNG waits for the virus strike. Doesn't actually connect on Roger, however, so PCZ will lose his life once more. FNG TP out will be successful. So you lose a tier 1 tower, you once again claim the Chikiro, but you're losing map control with a Sven. Yeah, losing map control with Sven is definitely not good. You lose a lot of access points to farm your jungle. The bigger thing is that as how poor the actual Razor is. Arrow, arrow, X, that'll work. <laughs> like the, the Puck and the Razor are really struggling to get gold right now. Puck's sitting at 3400, Razor at 51. The offlane Bristleback is ahead of this Razor because Chappie has gotten blown up twice, getting solo killed once by Iceberg and then that secondary one when he gets wrapped around in mid lane. Just not durable enough. Heroes. But you knew what you're up against. But you still pick the Razor. Fire strike. Now still? find the Spirit Breaker. He isn't going to commit anything major as Roger is just short range charging away. Yeah, it's, it's still a good Razor, razor game. That you know, in the lane that he's versus versus Marana, it's you know, it's not the best. You can't get your link off. Marana has low damage, but you have you have range advantage as that. But they both claimed each other's mid towers. The one thing is I'll that you know, Team Spirit they have three towers already brought down, so they have a surge of income because of that. Actually, expected to be higher. Yeah, it's not that much. It's like less than three k. Action item gets to arrive in for FN. He already has the Echo Saber and Mask of Madness, so he is cleaning up the stacks yeah. of Ancients that were prepared for him, but it's the Blink Dagger, which is the more the more critical thing. They have to play around him. Once Ghostic has Blink Dagger and once Sven has Blink, that's when they can start making these big aggressive plays. They do have to remember, though, to carry Reveal. So I'm going to be checking. Let me see. Okay, good. Spirit Breaker's got Dust and AA has the Blink. So they do have to be sure to have that versus the Moonlight Shadow. Spirit Breaker is the more important one for that to be on. Yeah. He's the one that will be on the front lines. Absolutely. But yeah, once they have both those blinks, that's where they can look to make sure they have Iceberg. Iceberg mid. Yeah. Very far up. This is yeah. punished. But no, he's fine. He drum charged End Eye of the Storm to try and catch up to the Marana. But he's not the one with the Disable. Oh, Vanskor using the Moonlight Shadow to just uh, slip in closer to that tier 2 tower. Get a nice ward down. Nice team wards, good. Oh, they're surrounding Roger. Taking Boboss is moving in, BZZ is here. That's a that's a lot of life to try and burn through. Yeah. They're trying to take control of the whole enemy side of the map, the whole Empire jungle. That's what you ideally want to do versus a Sven, so that he can't get his BKB at a good timing. But at this rate, it does look like FN's going to have a pretty good game in this one. He's going to be the Radiant's big driving force. For they just for Roger plant the OBS. And the Sentry Ward missed its target as well, and I believe the Observer scattered the smoke. I don't think it did actually, I think it was just outside of range of the smoke, they don't know this oh. is happening. They're charging him, on to BZZ, he's got 15 one charges, plus the Veil of Discord. Roger may not be too happy about this, he can't get back out again for 5 more seconds. Ice Blast will connect on Vanskor, but he will be okay. Wow. And so it doesn't look like they knew that the smoke was coming. As far as I could tell, when I switched the vision, it looked like it was like just on the outs outer rings of it. Okay. But they had everybody set up down there. You could see Roger charges, and he's like, oh god, I need to bail. There's actually Bristle back down here as well. And they want to take fights away from the Bristle for now, still, on Empire. They actually... Oh, they actually expended God Strength, expected to be able to take a fight there, too. And FN had to just run away with it. Yep. So now they lose a Tier 2. Right? They lose a Tier 2 tower. Team Spirit do this with a four-man lineup. Meanwhile, up on top lane, FNG completed his Blink Dagger. Yeah, he's so, been, got a lot of space. He's been quietly farming for quite a while now on the sinking. 19 minutes with Blink, 2-0-1. I'm still wondering just how effective FN is going to be. Once the PKB is up, I think he's going to have a lot better time yeah. coming up into the fights. Mainly because a lot of the burst damage, a lot of the problem he's going to have is magical. They don't have any kind of real disable that goes around that. The big thing is the like, double blinks, right? The Puck, if he's able to get a good initiation, there's no save on the side of Team Spirit. They have Moonlight Shadow, but if there's a reveal, which there should be, they can get coiled up. There's a BKB spend that blinks in and gets like a one or two hero stun. That's where the whole entire fight kind of starts. 
they have more ways of starting the engagement happen on the side of Empire. They have a charge, which can force a reaction from Spirit, and then the Puck and the Sven can follow up with an AA blast. Dyer's top tower I'll has get to the last side of the tower. Squawks up. I was, I was just watching it, I'm like, he knows. Like, he could barrel strike the wave and kill it off, and, and then he may feel fine, because he had a Blink Dagger available as well. But he didn't do either of those things. Mirana getting pretty strong though, level 15. Once he gets, once she, well, once she gets level 20 uh, talent on Mirana, you get that plus 50 damage. It's pretty nice to increase your DPS. But she's already doing a decent chunk, you know, one, what, 177 per hit. That's pretty good with the amount of attack speed that she has. Lion's having a good time too. Trying to build in, uh, actually, try and buying up the tome. He's just shy of level 10. Yeah, he should be pretty broke for the majority of this game. Yeah, but he's still looking to get a blink dagger. He believes. Yeah, eventually, one big fight gets a gets like a five hero stun or something. <laughs> less le less net worth than the ancient apparition. Yeah, it is hilarious to look at a lion who hasn't got a kill. Like finger of death is normally a great way to put a hero down, mm -hmm. but Vanscore is very selfless. He uh, lets it go at the start of the fight. Yeah. So first BKB finished online for Razor and then for Sven, and that's going to make it very hard for Team Spirit to really take fights once these golden heroes start running at them. It's all about Bristleback leading the charge and then them following up from behind that, but with the smoke coming out from Empire right now, they look to be seizing an opportunity. Jakiro is and not there either. charging forward. There is an Observe Ward up on the hillside. So they see Ghostic moving over. They initiate on the Mirana. Phobos in the middle of this. Wants to keep up the Quill Sprays. Or maybe not the Storm Bolt. Mirana is already down. Team Spirit are bailing out this fight. Ice Path will actually hold back FN. Macro Pyre available as well. They'll fight with the Epicenter and the Macro Pyre. Laposhka drops down low, but the damage is already done. Team Spirit have lost three. They'll lose four. And more than likely, they'll lose the whole enchilada. Laposhka is running away from Phobos. He's the tankier one. But charging again. Roger wants another piece of the action. There's nine cool spray stacks on Chappie, but it's still enough life for Chappie to survive, and all of Team Spirit are pushing up the daisies. Exactly what we were saying, though. That multi-form of initiation just comes out in Mirana versus Sven and versus Puck. They literally just were like, this is a core Mirana. Like, we just blow everything on her. She's the most farmed on the team. They kill her, and then it's the literally Spirit just having to disengage. They start running away. Decent Epicenter tries to come out from FNG, but they're already pretty durable. Like, the Sven is very tanky on HP. Razor as well, super tanky with range drops on pretty much everybody. And then it's a it's BKB Razor, so he can just run in and let the focus go on to him. So very well executed fight there coming out from Empire. And Spirit just getting caught off guard from that quick smoke rotation. And you can see Empire now looking to get further into the game. Hand of Midas oh, picked good. up from Ghostic. I love this actually on the puck this game. Going blink to Midas. Yeah, like he's prepping to if the game if there's like mistakes that happen. If we go to super late game, he will, he will get that level 25 faster and be absolutely ridiculously strong. Once he gets Ags too, Ags is going to be super useful for that extended stun duration. Don't know if this game is for the purpose of stunning them through BKB, but I think it's just holding them inside that coil for longer so the Sven can wail on them with the Razor. Yeah. Because coil this game is the dream for Razor and Sven. Here the they come. Commit. Forest Strike into what's mid. There's nothing Roger can really do about this. It's Ancient Apparition dying. Oh, then again, Ancient Apparition in the Ice Blast off and hits into Vanskull. So AA will die, die. but the Bristleback loses his life. They just go ham in. Iceberg wants to keep running. They have the review and the Dream Coil, it catches SK and Marana, FNG will fall, and Team Spirit. This has escalated very quickly, as Empire claimed three kills of heroes who have no buyback. Did Either you Roshan or you mid tier two. Did, 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 you, did, you, did you see the bristle? Uh, I saw him die. so fast, dude. The AA Blast flying over on top and then Sven just wailing on him. That's the beauty of Sven versus Bristle. You know, even if you're hitting him in the back, you're hitting him very hard and you're not having those quills like it's non-stop sprayed on you because the damage threshold is 210. But if you're taking a thousand, you don't shoot five quills out, you still only shoot that one quill per, per instance of high damage. So, and with Warcry, like they're all so speedy. They're all so fast with Warcry and Empowering Haste. How's our Spirit Breaker doing? I know he'll eventually want to be building into the Silver Edge versus Bristleback, so... Yeah. He's doing okay. Halfway to the... A little bit more than halfway to the... Sh uh, 
uh, Shadow Blade. It helps when he doesn't die. One three eleven. Yeah. On the Spirit Breaker, he's doing his job. He gets in there and he causes havoc. He's got very well. I think he may actually have more uh, assists than the entire Diasai combined. He's, it's close. Uh, he's he's three short. He's three short. Yeah, he's been having a good impact with the, the vision that he gets from the charges. But you're still seeing like it's very. I don't say top heavy for Team Empire, because things are starting to balance out a lot more, especially as uh, Razor has had more and more success in the fights. But there's so much net worth inside this Ven. Maybe that's the way Team Spirit have to look at this. Their lineup is fantastic for pushing, but can they even bring down this Ven now he's got a BKB? Can it you get rid of that tough. net worth like, like what Empire was doing in the last game? Not only a BKB, a full, cri a full oh. Crystalis as well. So. 15,000 yeah. net worth, 25 minutes. He is at the same level that the uh, Shadow Fiend was in the last game. Super farmed. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, big problem for Spirit. Like you said, though, Empire is a bit top heavy, but that's to be expected with the kind of game that they charge did. him. Charge him. Oh, well, fire strike. Tries to save him. FNG will be brought down. Saved all their ulties too. All they had to expend there was well, actually they didn't have to expend anything. Ice Stone was used previously to farm a neutral camp. They were trying to use SK as bait. They thought maybe one person would come down here and deal with them. Yo, FN, you got that. <laughs> Fortification, maybe you'll have to wait for it. Ghosty just got himself a DD rune after completing up an SMY. So you got the 8 second BKB on Chappy. Sorry, I said say Chappy. Um, and a 10 second BKB on this event. Yeah, top tower Team Spirit attack. does not fight well into BKBs. They have no BKB piercing disables to kind of like hold them during that. Ideally versus like a Sven, you see people pick like the Enigma, the Clockworks and stuff like that. Of course it was, you know, a last pick Sven or whatever, but they don't have anything to kind of just trap him when that happens. And they're so speedy, like I keep saying, you know, Warcry with Empowering Haste, they can just literally pop their BKBs, run at Team Spirit, and Team Spirit's pretty much like, oh my god, we need to disengage. And now there's Evasion as well on this vent. Didn't go the attack speed, he went for the 20% of Evasion. I love, that's, I actually love that talent. It's, I see a lot of people actually grab the 30 attack speed. I think they have their games, you know, there's games where you can grab it, if you like versus tons of spell damage, you're not really versus any physical, you don't really need the Evasion, of course. But in this game, the Evasion's very good versus the Marana. Basically means like when he's protected by the BKB, there's no damage that Spirit will really be able to like securely do to him. Yeah. BZZ is trying not to show himself too much in mid. He knows the Spirit Breaker can just charge him at any point. And Gozik would love a kill. He's 2,000 away from that Aghanim Scepter we're talking about. FN's getting close to picking up his Demon Edge. Iceberg. Diffusal Blade? He's trying to get anything he can, any type of damage items. I mean, it's good with the Manta, the Manta Diffusal. It's one of the highest damage items without being, you know, like a crit or a KB. For the cost, it's very high damage. I'm just wondering if it's going to be enough. I don't think that it will be. It's good to purge off, like, the Warcrying stuff, but not when they're BKB'd, of course, and to slow down the Razor he's chasing you, but again, it's BKB. So they're already very tanky. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. They're, uh, yeah, it's it's super hard for them to fight into Empire though. I feel like Team Spirit, at this point of the game, they'd ideally want to have like all the tier twos taken out and be in an advantage. When you're playing behind with this type of lineup, it's very hard to play into what Empire has. Ready and just scanned, and they know at least somebody is up there. That's why the vortex went out. But they give. it's it's very it's very rare that you see all five heroes of one team walk inside the pit. And for me, that just flags just how little Team Empire care about Team Spirit's initiation or ability to win a fight. Yep. Like, they don't have an ES to jump in for an Echo Slam. The SK is not intimidating. If he blinks into Borrow Strike, you'll turn around and kill him. And Van Skull playing his little shenanigans on bottom lane is also not going to succeed. Chappie moves with high oh, speed. And look at that damage output. Either Storm gets committed now, or it's only got one minute cooldown timer. And he's rapidly approaching his Scotty. Roger is well about to have that Shadow Blade, so those ganks will be smoother. No way to actually hex him. He can't yeah. hold a gem, so... Yep. Yeah, the guaranteed charge, practically. Unless you have sentries everywhere. But Spirit doesn't have money for that. 
They're currently being bankrolled by I don't know, the Iron Bank. Radiance Middle yeah. Tower <laughs> is under attack. <laughs> now that I've actually seen your disgust for a Game of Thrones reference, I can keep calling them out. Oh, I know. Oh, I don't mind them. I, I just I don't know what the obsession is with you guys. And sure, it's coming out soon, but relax, guys. That's the reason why. It's hot in the mind, man. Visibility. We're half a month away. Top tower is sure. under attack. Empire feeling very commanding in this game though. It's only a 5k gold lead, but it's starting to feel a lot higher than that. Fallen. Spirit just unable to find any opportunities to actually kill anything. They hey, at least got the top tier 2 tower, like uh, PZZ. Yeah, it's, just it's a small stabbing game. him in the back kind of style. It's a, it's a small game. He'll take any get at the moment. He's very optimistic. I'm not certain that like how you would even approach uh, item builds, but he's gonna go for a Shiva Scout, maybe feeling like he needs a lot more armor to survive the physical damage, but considering how much damage Vent's gonna be pumping out, I don't think this will matter. He needs anything, like any kind of like armor items, but he's super immobile. And like now it's Empire he, he again. Can mail, it may even be more effective. Uh, they're pretty durable already though, on the side of Empire. Good obs. Great pick off target. Oh, it's double. There's... They don't even hit him in yeah. the front. Okay, now I feel like <laughs> But he is stunned forever under that coil and Kofi. And now Aghanims is going to be brought out for the puck. Oh. Chappie charging toward the Jakiro, but yeah, it's in their face now. The real charge is Spirit Break was a little bit too far behind. Yeah. So Aghanim is now coming on the career for the puck, which is going to help more for the fights. Of course, Dream Coil on cooldown still, but... Back to FN, uh, the Observer, well, they see so much. <gasps> Roger reveals the fact there's an Observer Ward there by doing what he did. But at the same time, okay, no, they, they deep water before anyone can come close. Get yeah, a through sight on Marana. God's strength is right. FNG. Chappy. I know he's got the gem and an Aegis of the Immortal. It's like he's trying to bait them to they come out to and fight him, but he's at 200 HP. FN got kind of handled there too. The Macropire Ice Path dual breath combo brings him pretty low. He's about to ha I actually I think has Bloodthorn finished up now if he wants to purchase the whole thing. Yeah, he does. So Bloodthorn Sven, he's already hit, he's already hit critical mass. He's pretty much six slotted. He can change a few items in and out, but That is pretty terrifying. 32 minutes of Sven who is almost six slotted. Chappie just took uh, 15 seconds. To run from almost top of the map to the bottom of the map. The damage. Build. He doesn't lie. So fast. 547. So furious. Alright. Toby just got this this smile. Just makes everyone else smile. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So burn your shrine. It still doesn't bring Chappie above half of his HP. Maybe he needs a heart next, instead of Viscardi. Hey, just will expire soon and heal him, right? Yeah. Pretty soon. How long has he got? Like 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 30 se seconds. That's it. Finds himself a nice illusion to link up, get full damage as well, to be able to push the lane in harder, but... Yeah, they're feeling good. Let's just switch out his items. Yeah. This will allow him to actually buy the Scotty in a bit. Having the kite against the Bristleback is going to be a real problem. Bristleback's still trying to build into evasion, but... Like, you know the, you know how this, this scenario is going to go down. Raid is going to steal all your damage, so you can do absolutely no physical damage. You then uh, have Sven, who will probably just cleave you down anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the Bloodborne on top of everything, which cannot be dispelled on Phobos. He doesn't have any, anything available to dispel it. Yeah, so all that evasion is going to be for naught. No, the supports have low... Yeah, nope. Lion's still hoping he gets a Blink Dagger. Optimistic. Optimistic indeed. Empire looking to just increase their lead by even more. They know that Team Spirit is terrified at this point. They know that these guys are probably huddling together and not farming efficiently whatsoever. And they're right. Team Spirit is literally sitting all together. They can't really split farm because they're playing versus Spirit Breaker lineup. So every time you do split up, you are putting yourself at risk of dying. Suffering heavy, there you go. heavy losses. That's the one you like. The Raging Bolt time. Yeah, that's a good one. Boże, ty posmatrywa grusz, co 
I think Roger's getting a little bit bored as the Spirit Breaker. It's like, can we just go already? Can I charge something? Can, There's can... no one showing on the map. Uh... <laughs> I just want to charge one person. Just one. Just let me do one. Plasma oh, field. Burn through the wave. I have Scotty finished. 3600 yeah. or 35 HP. 3500 HP on the Razor and Sven when uses God Strength is sitting at roughly 3500 as well. So they are both Dyer's sitting top tower at evolved. a very tank tanky position. And Team Spirit's lineup doesn't deal well versus that kind of tankiness. They only have so much spell damage within them. This is the best situation they can ask for. BZZ macrifies the bottom lane, forces a return TP from someone who cannot rejoin the front lines is a great conductor. and keeps the creep wave pressured on the bottom which means Empire, even if they do want to go high ground and look towards it, they cannot do so. Yep. You got one minute to Roshan, but, but it's it's still like Team Spirit can keep doing this yeah. again and again. As soon as you say that though, take yeah. a look at what FN buys. He's got the Boots of Travels finished, so he can actually respond. He can actually be positioned down there to defend the push and then join the rest of his team if they want to play it like that, if they do see that split push being a problem. He's actually going to go for Silver Edge himself. On the Sven? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's okay. Well, he's got Shadow Blade at the moment. Yeah. But that can replace the Master Madness, I suppose. He yeah, probably wants some still of some lifesteal, but he can replace a couple items, maybe even the Echo Saber. Well, he's getting the Vlads. Vlads is being built on uh, Spirit Breaker. Okay. Yeah, we'll see which one he replaces. He's got options to switch. You can even just hold on to one of them and just switch them in and out. Mm -hmm. Gives up his BTs. <laughs> Not the BTs. Move for speed? Are you, you get enough move for speed from Warcry. Play it like a boots, a boot, a bootless weaver. <laughs> just instant uh, reaction to a, to a bootless Sven. weaver. No, a bootless Sven. You're saying like a bootless weaver. Bootless weaver is fine. Sven is like. That hero suffers. He gets photo speed of 12%. <laughs> when that boots that shite. But still. Alright, how long has it been since we've had a good smoke? Aghanims have just been up on Puck for a very long time. And they haven't come out to try and really fight Team Spirit at all. I mean, Spirit is absolutely terrified to take engagement. Finished up their Lincolns oh, now they're as well coming. The Marana, but... The arrow flies, they're looking for a target, a 5 second stun over on Roger. This is the best opportunity they've had to kill someone in a very long time. The Spirit Breaker, uh -oh. he takes through so much and now they jump in. The three man call, Chappie, no coil just yet, in fact Ghostic. Oh, they just focus on the Marana. 77 seconds without her now. FM, PK beat up, looks for a bigger target. No one's chasing you BZZ, but he doesn't know that. Empire is just making a break for mid. They five second arrow of the Spirit Breaker, but everybody's a bit too far away to close the gap, and it's on top of a shrine. So Empire can respond much faster. Although the shrine was on cooldown, but they did have everybody else in, in the vicinity. We react. All right, do you go up now? Roshan's still got another 52 seconds to respawn. You wait for the Rosh. Yeah. They still have good, pretty good high ground defense. You know, the same thing. Epicenter is still a bit threatening, and the macro pyre from Jikiro those slow down pushes a lot. That's true. So they wait for the second life. They wait for the cheese. Okay, so he switches to Lincoln's on Sven instead of the uh, Silver Edge. Okay. Does make a little bit more sense. Uh, there's very few disables. There's almost nothing long range. Which is able to trigger that. Yeah, so it would just like be. Mana drain, it's, X sun. Yeah, it's, it's a lion blocker, basically. And if he doesn't take it, he can still give it to the Razor and yeah, send the Razor exactly. up high ground. That's a nice thing for Iceberg. Something to help him to push. Yeah, he's farmed. He's, he's got good network. He's got 18,000, but it's, it's the other two cores that are the issue. They are very. Very broke, and they do not match up well versus the big cores inside of Empire, as we said there in the draft. Oh, goodbye, Roshan. Roger and Maposhka, they stand guard. And Roger's Vlad is, is already on the line. So, Aegis Immortal, Chappie's moving forward for it. He'll drop his Hyperstone. And cheese. This is the 140 minute game. Cheese are still relevant. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let's sell the cheese. Uh, so Lincoln's about to be finished up on both the Puck and the Sven. 
so they can just throw multiple Lincolns on the frontliner. Lion finishes up Link though. Vanscore does get it eventually. Mm -hmm. But Phobos got a little bit more sustain as well with his 10% life steal. Yes, but it's yeah, a level you know, 20. What do these? What does this really do versus the side of Empire's heroes? It's not really that good. Yeah, he, he ain't gonna life steal if he's dead. Yeah. Like, and it takes like two hits from FN with the Bloodthorn on him. Maybe three, four. Blood strength. A lot of damage. Charge. On top of the Sand King, FN. Oh, they haven't pulled out of the charge. FN's gonna BKB and BT home. Being safe, I mean, that is his 8 second BKB. Can understand that Playing too good. when you have uh When you have a slot at TI on the line. Like, yeah. you, you, you don't, you don't mess around. They're not going for any risky type plays. They're playing very smart on the side of the fire. There are 11, 11k in the gold in front. Slow and Your steady. experience is, is rapidly approaching 20,000 in front. You've got the Lincoln Spear done now over on Ghost Stick, so you're going to have, you already have, the double Lincolns from Team Empire, making it impossible for that Blink Dagger or Vanscore to do anything. And they're coming up through the bottom. Yeah, they're they're in a position engagement. now they can five man. Like Yeah. I mean they're passive. They have Aegis Cheese and they've got all the tools they need to close this game out. It's just about doing it at this point. And Spirit they your can guess. try to defend this. They have to throw all their bodies at it and it's gonna drop very quickly as soon as Sven starts beating on it. Seven seconds until Sven's got BKB and God Strength both together. God Strength is already up. And in fact, he will commit it, beating into the tower. No further, the there is fortification available. They'll burn the metamorphosis and, well, Sentry Ward from the Radiance in a great position. They see them hiding inside the Moonlight Shadow. My fans get a little bit left. Uh, actually, not enough time left on the God Strength. And goodbye, Sentry Ward. The Glyph was not expended either, and Empire actually has to back up. They don't want to take the risk of trying to break that high ground versus sinking. Still scary, like the the combo, you know, this split breaking high ground versus sinking is always an intimidating aspect. I'm actually worried now. Intimidating concepts to go high ground. Team Empire playing very safe. <laughs> uh, they have pretty damn good D push. But you they can... have they have a good tricor though. They have a Sven Razor and a Puck who's going to be getting level 25 quite early. I I'm not saying we're going to go for over two hours, but I think we'll have I it close out around 50. Probably the la the next rush will be the big one, or if Spirit gets caught outside their base, because Spirit's heroes don't scale in the same manner. Mirana gets bigger, but Jakiro has already hit his threshold. Yeah. And Bristleback is too under farm to really get to that point where he becomes an absolute monster. Like he doesn't have this Radiance Octarine or something like this. He's very utility based Bristle. While Empire has all the tools they need to really just kill and end. Well, they're coming again. So Aegis Immortal is still on Champy. Gold Strength is back off cooldown. He'll have his full combination to stop this attack. Trying to get that fortification out. Pro boss in close. There goes your storm bolt. Static link already being used, but they four staff it away. That micro pyre ice path is doing work. Razor as well as FN is dropping. Razor, the Aegis Immortal will burn, but FN protected by his BKB attacking into the back of the bristle. Not what they wanted to do in the epicenter. Forward catching Roger. He wants to get away from this one, but the ice path is holding him there. So Roger will end up falling, leaves the Gem of Truth set behind, and they'll get a consolation prize as well. It's the ancient an apparition. Both heroes down for just under a minute. Gem of True Sight lost. Issues. Did the but Aegis... they do take the tier 3 tower. Did it just time out or did he die? It, bur it he, burned. It, he popped. Died. Okay. it popped. It was because he uh, got ice path and macro pied yeah. and just burnt. I saw the... what it was... Uh, epicenter on top of macro pyre on top of ice path into a lion stun so they actually perfectly executed that on spirit before the bkbs came out so sven was put down to like a third hp before the fight even started and he was pretty intimidated by it so i had to actually back up and now the marana is getting bigger full mkb finished up she is looking she's doing quite a lot of damage now on this so it's a bit a bit scary for empire here but they're still they're still looking just fine they just you know, gotta wait for that next stage, just that next set of cheese, and try to get better opportunity of who they're gonna jump and kill.
Because that time again, you know, they went to focus on the bristle, they went to focus on the towers, and they got Scott. They just got combo. They're giving space though for Team Spirit to get good items to fight. Like Lotus Orb for the bristle back is like I know he's got a lot of early game items anyway, but it's gonna make it difficult for whoever Empire initiate on. If it is the Marana, you can free her out. Lincoln's fear on her protection is there. Blink yours four stuff. Enough for FNG to play really great positioning. And we've already seen him being really good at that. An E-Blade pop from Jakiro make it difficult for Zven to attack. Once that BKB is down, it's already on a seven second duration. Combos well with Vanscore as well, who's building into an Ether Lens with his plus 60 gold per minute, or 90 gold per minute. He is going to get the money required for such a thing. Team Spirit are starting to slowly build up what they need to repel Empire. An Empire, they're going to smoke up and try and re reduce that time. Yeah, Empire still feeling very confident in this one though. Their levels are very high and their experience is the big one that's you know, starting to swing a little bit. He goes straight to take out a shrine quickly. Yeah. But remember though, it is also... It's a minute 40 until Roshanish. Minutes 40 till Rosh. Possibly. And Empire has now hit two of their level 25s and Puck is nearing that, level 23. So when Puck gets it too, that 420 GPM starts kicking in and Puck starts to become very rapidly the most farmed peer on the map. And Sven actually, you notice, he took the minus eight seconds storm hammer cooldown. I've been seeing this actually more often now. At first we saw everybody grabbing the 65 damage, but then a couple times now I've seen people grab the minus eight and it's quite nice, you know, having a five second cooldown, two, two second duration stun. You're always able to follow up with your teammates. And he actually, so he buys himself his own moon shard and eats it. So not gonna wait for the puck to hit 25 or wait any longer. But he just... Charge coming forward. FNG's playing bait game though. The Observer Ward that they have up allows them to see what was coming. So they hit the Spirit Breaker, a full five second arrow is done. This is not, they learned their lesson from last time. Not what you want to initiate on. Even at half life, he's still got a thousand to burn through. Yeah, and he's got like 50 armor or something when Warcry gets popped. No. Oh. It's a 22 basic. <laughs> but it is still good from Team Spirit. They're showing not a lack of fear to come they outside just... their base, but they're making the most of their aggressive warning. Yeah. They just spotted Miposhka in the top lane. They use a Mirana Moonlight Shadow to try to maybe get an opportunity, but they do not find it. No. Iceberg has now pulled ahead of the Razor again, though. With MKB Dragonlance, almost level 25 on her as well. She, her damage is looking pretty decent. 361 per hit right now. So I'm thinking, man, like, this game isn't as clear cut as Empire would like it to be. Yeah. And I got, I still got the other funny feeling that it's all because of just their mistiming. The gold strength being used a little bit too early from FM when they try to push in the bottom lane. There was a window of opportunity they had. Nice five second arrow. I swear he's catching these just to bait them into a fight. Probably. I mean, he doesn't need to farm anymore. He's got his level 20. He's got the 120 GPM talent on Spirit Breaker. All he needs to do is run around like a fool. Meanwhile, the rest of Spirit farm. It's going to be a Radiance build for Bristleback. So, so he's gonna go for it anyway. Yeah. He does live a long time in the fight and there's uh, non-MKB Zven. Uh, no Silver Edge either on anyone. Yeah. Spirit Breaker eventually. But, well, we thought it was gonna be the Razor. He's done it in the past. Yeah. And that's the one thing. He has done it the last two games that they've played versus Bristleback with well, the Razor on their team. They did win. They did go for the Silver Edge. He, he still get the one slot. Like, you can take, you can get rid of the cheese and get Silver Edge there. Yep. That's a lot of stats though. <laughs> Scotty, S and Y, you already get the uh, plus strength from, from the BKB, then all your extra armor on top of Warcry, and then the Silver Edge with the ultimate orb from that. Doesn't sound too bad. It sounds very nice if you're a Razor. Sounds a little bit crappy if you're trying to keep up with people, however. Static Link is, was not something which we really saw feature from Chappie in the last couple of fights. Even when the Aghanim stream call came up, right, it was from that point. Yeah. Uh, there was almost, there was very little damage stolen. It was always triggered to get Team Spirit to back off. Yeah. The thing is that they're still, you know, they're still having Spirit play very defensively. Spirit can still farm a bit, but they're very limited in comparison to Empire, who's farming the whole map. 
Puck. Building toward that Hex, halfway to level 25. And if they can hold him there, Chappie with the, with the Static Link steal, maybe once he can get a lot of damage. Hmm. I get it. I get it. Watch, has almost got his BKB. Actually, oh. I, he's getting... S Wait, what? He, built this, he, he bought the Silver Edge recipe? I think he bought that earlier while he was dying. Mm. And then he s s put the spirit of the BKB into his quick fire. Just interesting to see him uh, switch out so quickly, because he could have finished the Silver Edge with the money he has. Yeah. Oh, um, Pushka's doing the clever warding right now. He doesn't want to get his dewarded since there's a gem, so he actually brings a Quelling Blade out on the AA, cuts some trees and puts the, uh, the vision on the high ground there in that one spot that we've seen some people do. So you do need to cut some trees to make that one very viable, but like I said, he brought the Quelling Blade out, he's ready to give them the best vision possible. No one from Team Spirit actually has, well, FNG can jump up there, but he has to jump up there yeah. to deward it. No one has flying vision like a bat rider. Oh. Puck level 25. And 420 and side device. Going for Dagon next. Yep, you can just watch the network bar as he starts to skyrot get toward the top. And again, Empire gonna claim themselves a free rush and Spirit has no way to claim this. So Aegis Immortal. Chappie's still holding on to the cheese. He'll switch it, grab the Aegis. They leave the cheese on the ground. Mapashka! I don't want this. I'm lactose intolerant. Spirit Breaker! That's uh... Roger's like, oh god, I'm picking up the cheese. I've been here before. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> well, see if Team Empire can, can push in and take Team Spirit space. Bottom Rax is obviously exposed with the lack of the tier 3 tower. But instead, Empire. They're going to do it the harder way. They're going in through the mid where the tier, uh, tier 3 tower still exists, or are they? Nope. Maybe clean up the last shrine and then go for it. But they have good waves coming in on all three lanes, so maybe they do just go for the building right now. We'll get the double catapult wave. Oh, well, they're going for the shrine. It's actually quite good for uh, Team Spirit this happens now. Yeah, with that double catapult wave coming in, it could have been problematic if they did push, but the catapults are still alive, and Empire's looking to go very soon. Chappie has an Aghanim's finish, oh, too. Just turns on the Eye of the Storm. They'll come in, Lion, smoked up. They've actually got the three backliners, BZZ included, all smoked up. FNG's pinging those catapults ferociously. The Warcry catapults take down 500 health off of the melee racks. Eye of the Storm was expended, though. It's down to a quarter duration. But it is an agony side of the storm. the buildings if he's able to get the yeah, static link. Look at the damage. Look at the increase. So quick. 157. Now they charge forward. It was a spirit breaker getting hit by the Lotus Orb as well. SK has to buy back into the game. FN's committed both BKB plus his god strength. And what do they get from it? You get a buyback out from an SK. That's nice. Minimal damage to a melee Rax. Did they steal his gem? No, it does not look like they were able to grab it before. They had two gems before, Team Spirit. Oh, did they? So yeah. They took their gem. Am I, like, not seeing it? Is it? Yeah. They have one on the Puck, but it's Puck's gem. Illusion. And the other one's on the SK, and it is SK's gem. Maybe they only had one gem. I, just, I thought I just... Yeah, I just oh, there's one on the courier. Yeah, there's one on the courier. Okay, yeah. I'm like, I, 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 no wonder I was, <laughs> I was stripping out. There's two couriers, there's two couriers. on top of yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, I clicked and I was like, I didn't see it the first time. Wait, yeah, the yeah, when I dragged, I'm like, oh no, I saw the gem. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I, I, I lost my crap yesterday. I double checked myself today. Yeah. So FNG tried to stun and slow them down there. Instant BKBs get popped. He gets blown up. And the other big crucial thing that happened there with Spirit is... Empire was not hitting buildings there, they were hitting heroes, and Spirit actually triggered their Glyph. So Glyph is on cooldown if Empire does want to go for the next push soon. Yeah, they have 3 minutes and 45 seconds to do it. Chappie is already approaching, the one person they don't have is Vent, but BT is available. FN buys a full Mjolnir to replace his Echo Saber, and now he's in, they know Glyph oh, is down. Look at him just go, BKB! Yeah, they do Take the down. Rex, run away! Apart from Chappie. Chappie will get stunned. He's continuously getting bashed up by the Mirana. Continuously getting bashed up by the Mirana until the Aegis Immortal will trigger. Spirit Breaker charging forward. Phobos 
Trying to protect himself with the Lotus Orb. And, uh, well, no strike. I heard Nether begin. I didn't see a follow-up. They got the Rex. You said, you know, Glyph was on cooldown, so they seized that opportunity instantly. Um, and the crazy thing is, dude, when when the Razor is next to Spirit Breaker, he's actually perma hasted, even without SMY. Unseen. I want to see him run back next to him. And he's it's 550, even without SNY. Oh, it's 529. Why did it say 550? That was weird. Oh, I think he was hit by Warcry as well. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, there's, we talked about in the draft, there's so much mobility coming up from them. BKB finished on the Spirit Breaker, Ghostic. Like we said, as soon as he gets the 420 GPM, just look at that gold. He was at 20,000 like three minutes ago. Now he's at 26,000. And he's got 7,000 current gold. The Midas, ha having, dude, having an issue of what do I drop? The Midas paying off. Oh, well, he'll give the gem to the Spirit Breaker probably and grab the Dagon Fire for himself. Roger didn't catch the arrow. Disappointed. So it's Arcane Rune right now for Sven, so he actually will have that boost pull down on his god But for now, just throwing the war cry out to Chappie. Chappie being the front line of a oh, nice to go. FN starts on the tower, the bar strike forward, and BKB protected him. Not to mention Lincoln Spear 2 Lion gets severed. You've still got the Spirit Breaker causing issues with his own BKB, but Macro Pyre, maybe they want to back up. Gold Strength's got a little bit longer left. FNG coming out to try and fight. They know they can't just let him retreat once more, but that's now an SK down. No buyback for him. Phobos needs the cool spray, stacks up. The Storm Bolt will be returned, but Lincoln protects on all fronts. Ice Path is nice, but Team Spirit just doesn't have the manpower, doesn't have the strength available. They will lose their entire lineup, and they will lose game two. Almost definite, even with these buybacks coming out. The stuns can keep pouncing around. The Lincolns will continue to protect. The melee racks will fall. Chappie commu actually consumes the cheese. And they're looking for the kill. If they can bring Faux Boss down, he will go down. You can buy back on him, but if he does so, there's not enough money for a damage dealing item. And now God's future. Strength is back up because he used it initially with an arcane rune. Oh boy. So now it looks like this will be it. Mega Creep's gonna be claimed. Still no fortification. They did all of this in the one window when fortification was down. Yeah, it was a big mistake to use Glyph there earlier by Team Spirit, but it was also Empire just taking the charge and going in on it. And so Spirit was just feeling desperate. You know, the, this Empire draft was very strong and they hit the timings perfectly. Well, Team Empire, one victory away if it is possible to advance themselves out of the grand final and into the TI7 group stage. That's what they want. Team Spirit want to force it to a game five. It's a long road. They might be able to achieve it.